In this video, we're going to cover working with dynamic or static meshes within the modeling mode and some of the problems and solutions that you are going to go through and may need an answer to. And some of the things we'll cover is how to convert static meshes to one type or the other, to dynamic or to static, how to merge meshes, how to duplicate them, how to split them, and finally, how to export them as an FBX file. And this is all going to help you when you are working with the modeling mode, either modeling meshes themselves or using it to block things out and you need a little more control over your static meshes or over your dynamic meshes. So let's get into it. First, let's do a little bit of background. If you've never worked with modeling mode and working with static meshes or dynamic meshes and what the difference between the two, what the advantages are and why you should use one over the other. So let's switch over to modeling mode. Shift five is the shortcut key. And this gives you access inside UE5 to use the modeling tools to create static meshes. Now there are two types of meshes that you're going to be working with inside UE5, either static meshes or dynamic meshes. And this has to do when you are working inside the modeling mode not when you are dragging any of the meshes, which are static meshes from the content browser. So for example, I'm going to create a cube. Uh, let's do just a box right now. And I'm going to insert it into the level. And essentially, this is going to give us a static mesh that we can use inside the levels. Now, when uh, right now, this is still not a complete mesh because once you are using, once you're creating static meshes uh, using the modeling mode, you have to accept it. So essentially, this is just a work in progress right now. And before I hit accept, inside the properties, you have an output type. And this gives you ability to create a static mesh or a dynamic mesh. And we're going to ignore volume for this tutorial. So the differences between the two different types of meshes that you can work with inside the modeling mode, static mesh will create a static mesh that will be kept and saved inside the content browser. This will allow you to take that static mesh and drag it from the content browser into your level, into an existing open level or into any other level that you are going to be working on in the future. So you will have a set of static meshes saved inside the content browser for you to work with. And all of your world geometry, your entire environment will be made up of these static meshes. Another type of mesh that you could create and work with uh, within the modeling mode is a dynamic mesh. And the dynamic mesh does not get saved into the content browser and that is only kept inside the level itself. And the primary advantage of working with dynamic meshes, it, it does not auto populate and clutter the content browser. And dynamic meshes is one of the best ways to block things out without having to constantly, you know, have dozens or hundreds of different static mesh iterations being saved into the content browser. So for example, if I, I right now I selected uh, output type to dynamic mesh, I'm going to hit accept and it does not get saved. If I create another box, and in this case, I'm going to switch it to static mesh and I'm going to hit accept. UE5 will automatically create a folder and inside this folder, here's our static mesh. This is the static mesh right here. And I could go ahead and insert another static mesh. Basically, I can auto populate this environment by just dragging it from the content browser. Uh, however, anytime you modify this brush, it will automatically save and update inside the content browser. And anytime you create a new box, for example, let's do a sphere and I save it and I'll choose static mesh. Again, it gets saved inside the content browser. And eventually, because you were just modeling, experimenting, you may be blocking things out. This can clutter the content browser by a lot. And it's not uncommon to have hundreds of different iterations of different meshes that you are working with, because again, you're just blocking things out, you're experimenting, and you're just trying to find the right shape, the right model and detail and so on. And eventually uh, you get a lot of these meshes that you end up not using except for a few. So my preference from whenever you are blocking things out or experimenting is uh, not to work with static meshes, but to work with dynamic meshes. So that way, uh, let's do a, something else. Let's do a cylinder. So instead of having this mesh be auto populated and saved inside the content browser, I'm simply going to change this to a dynamic mesh. And it's only going to get saved inside the level itself. So I can go ahead and do anything that I want. I can model, I can uh, deform, I can uh, play around with this mesh 
and modify it without having to save it inside the content browser. And all I would have to do for this dynamic mesh to get saved is I would need to save this map, save current level as in order to keep whatever I have inside the level. And again, dynamic meshes are one of the best ways to block things out to get the environment size, the dimensions, the scale, and not have to worry about, you know, all of these meshes get saved into your content browser. Now with that, you do have a few issues that you encounter whenever you're working with dynamic meshes, and that's ability for you to maybe export a dynamic mesh as an FBX file. So you can then maybe import it into your model and your application and then continue modeling there. Or maybe let's say you're working with dynamic mesh and you decide that you want to go ahead and take that dynamic mesh and convert it to a static mesh. So then you do get it saved inside the content browser. So you have a copy that you can use, save and reuse in any levels in the future. Or maybe let's say you want to take multiple meshes, combine them together and then save them either as a new dynamic mesh or as a brand new static mesh. So in this tutorial, we're going to cover how to work between the two different mesh types, how to convert them, how to split them, how to merge them, and finally how to export them. So all of this will help you to either model inside UE5 faster, as well as block things out so you can then export different parts of your environment and import it into your modeling package. First option is let's cover how to convert. So I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to make sure this is a dynamic mesh. So it means that it's going to be only available to us inside the level and not inside the content browser. When I insert it, I'm going to hit accept, make sure it's dynamic mesh for output type. And then I'm just going to modify a little bit. So it's not just a cube. So I'm going to go to model poly group edit. I'm going to select the face and I'm just going to drag it and just make it something different. And let's go ahead and also select the top and then maybe uh, let's do an extrude real quick. Let's select the face on the side, extrude it. All right, so you can see that how quickly you can just modify dynamic mesh inside the level itself and not have it to save as a different version or an additional version and then maybe have it to update. So basically, again, it's all contained inside the level. I'm gonna hit accept for this. So now we have a modified cube. So in the right hand side in the outliner, you can see that this is a dynamic mesh actor contained only within the level itself. Now let's say you have a mesh that you've been working with as a dynamic mesh, but you want to convert it to a static mesh. So then it actually does get saved inside the content browser. So how do you do that? Well, you can convert a dynamic mesh to a static mesh and then begin to save them. To do this, select the mesh inside the level. That's a dynamic mesh. Go to X form and choose convert. And then you have a few options, mainly the output type. Since this is a dynamic mesh, you can go ahead and convert this to a static mesh. So here you take a dynamic mesh and you convert it to a static mesh. Once you hit accept, this will take this mesh and convert it and replace it into a static mesh. And then you get a copy of it saved inside the content browser right here inside generated and name of the computer folder. So I'm going to hit accept. So now you can see inside the outliner, it's now a static mesh actor and we have a copy saved inside the content browser. Now, if you have a copy of a static mesh and you want to convert it to a dynamic mesh, you just repeat the process, go to convert output type, choose dynamic mesh, hit accept. And now this becomes a dynamic mesh. However, you do have a copy now saved inside the content browser for a static mesh. So now you have a static mesh and a dynamic mesh. Now, if you have multiple copies, so uh, let's go to create and I'm just going to do a regular box, make sure it's dynamic, hit accept. And let's do a, a sphere, place it on top and make sure it's also dynamic. So I have two dynamic meshes, a cube and a sphere. If you have multiple meshes that you want to go ahead and convert to a static mesh, select them both, left click on one, hold control to add to a selection for another. Both of these are dynamic. Let's go to X form, convert, and we're going to choose static mesh. So that way, both of these will be converted into a static mesh and both of them will get saved inside the content browser. So they're not going to be merged. That's for another option. So I'm going to hit accept. You now have a sphere. That's a static mesh, a cube. That's a static mesh. And both of these have been converted from dynamic to static box sphere. And let me go ahead and quickly select them again. And uh, I just want to convert them back to dynamic. So I'm going to go to convert and dynamic mesh hit accept. So now both of these are dynamic. Next option we have is merge. So let's say uh, you want to convert a dynamic mesh 
or a couple of the dynamic meshes, two or more, two static meshes, but you want to merge them so they are one static mesh instead of multiple static meshes. So for this, you need to merge. So let's go ahead and take the sphere and this cube. Both of them are dynamic and I want to merge them so they are one single mesh. For this, make sure both or two or more are selected inside your content, uh, your, inside your viewport. And under X form, you have an option to merge. Let's go ahead and enable this. And you just need to define a few properties. First is uh, write to. Do you want to create a new object? Do you want to overwrite the first input object or do you want to overwrite and replace uh, with the last input object? For us, let's go ahead and choose a new object. Basically, it will take these two meshes and create a new object from them. You can uh, name your mesh. I'll just leave it as default. Output type. What do you want this new mesh to be merged? Uh, what's the output type for it? From input means that it's going to be a dynamic mesh because that's both of these are dynamic meshes. We can also choose static mesh, dynamic mesh. So let's go ahead. Uh, we want to have these as a static mesh. And then how do you want to handle the input? What do you want to do with these two meshes after we've converted them to a static mesh? Do you want to delete them? Do you want to hide them? Do you want to keep the inputs? Do you want to keep the first or the last? I'll just uh, choose delete inputs. And then once you've defined the properties, go ahead and hit accept. You now have a copy. That's a static mesh inside the content browser. And this has been converted to a static mesh. It's been merged and converted. Now let me go ahead and take these meshes, this one single static mesh, and I'm going to go ahead and convert it back to a dynamic mesh. So again, this is now back to a dynamic mesh only will be contained inside this level. And the next option I will cover is duplicate. So I'm going to select this dynamic mesh and I'm going to choose duplicate. And in here you can duplicate a dynamic mesh and then convert it as you duplicate it to another type of mesh. In our case, let's uh, convert it with duplication to a static mesh. You can rename it if you want. I'll keep it the same. And then you, uh, how do you want to handle the inputs? Do you want to delete it or do you want to leave it? In this case, let's go ahead and keep the inputs. So in this case, we will have a dynamic mesh. That's the subject right here. And then we'll have a copy that's going to be converted, duplicated and converted to a static mesh. And once you've defined all the properties, we'll go ahead and hit accept. So now I have dynamic mesh right here and we have a copy for a static mesh. Next, let's cover the split option. Split option is if you have multiple meshes that have been combined and merged like we have, you can split them up into separate meshes. So I'm going to select the static mesh and it could be again a dynamic mesh or a static mesh. It doesn't really matter. Select it and then go to split. And the only option you really have is what do you want to do with the output type? Since this is a static mesh, let's go ahead and uh, create our output type. Uh, you can choose to a dynamic mesh. Uh, you can uh, keep it as a static mesh. And in this case, let's go ahead and keep it as a static mesh. Uh, again, the copies, the two, the sphere and the cube will get saved into the content browser. But let's go ahead and uh, keep it to a static mesh and hit accept. So now you have a sphere and a cube. And we have copies for both now inside the content browser. So we successfully split a merged mesh into separate parts. And because we chose static mesh, we now have copies inside the content browser. And last I want to cover is the ability to export uh, any of the meshes, either a static mesh or a dynamic mesh out of UE5 as an FBX file. So then you can import it into your modeling package and then maybe use it as a starting point to model further instead of using the modeling mode inside UE5. Very common method of when you block things out. So the easiest way is if you do have a static mesh, static meshes can be easily exported right from the content browser and by just simply right clicking on a mesh and then choosing asset action and choose export. Then choose a folder where you want to export this into. It doesn't really matter where, just remember where it's at. Uh, you can rename it here and click save. An option menu will pop up uh, for you to choose what type of information you want to export. And here you can choose export FBX version. Uh, if you want collisions, if you want level of detail, vertex color and everything else, I'll just keep all everything at default. These are static objects. So I'll keep whatever it gave me and hit export. And now you have exported that static mesh from the content browser that you can use and import into your modeling package. Now with the static mesh is that simple, but let's say you are working primarily with dynamic meshes when you're blocking things out and you want to go ahead and take those dynamic meshes and export them out of UE5. So for dynamic meshes, you do have to convert them to a static mesh first before you can export. So if I would go ahead and uh, this is our dynamic mesh, if I try to export this, first of all, we can't export anything from the content browser. 
because uh, this mesh does not exist other than inside the level. There is an option that you can export meshes right from your level inside the content instead of inside the content browser by having the selection made and then go to file, export selected, and then choosing where you want to save. So let's just do a, I'm going to name it test. And if I try to export this mesh, which is a dynamic mesh right now as the export selection, the save as type is set to FBX. So it should export as FBX, but it will not be able to. So if I click save, an, uh, an error will pop up, has nothing that can be exported as FBX. So UE5 does not see this as static geometry and cannot export any information within that FBX file. Now, if I try to do this for a static mesh, it will work. It's just another option for you to export. So let's go to file, export selected. And I, I'm just gonna type in cube and click save. The same menu will pop up, I'll just choose export. So you can use this drop down menu from file uh, with the meshes that already have been inserted as long as they are static meshes and not dynamic. But for dynamic meshes, you can do one of two things, uh, knowing that what I sh now showed you, you have to take those dynamic meshes and convert them to a static mesh. So I'm gonna just duplicate this, hold Alt, duplicate, so now we have, we have two dynamic meshes and I'm just gonna simply uh, duplicate it so we have a multiple. Because usually when you're working with dynamic meshes for blackouts, you will have multiple of dynamic meshes and usually not just single one. So let's say you wanna export a bunch of dynamic meshes. You just have to make a selection of all of them in order to, so you can export it as FBX and then bring it into modern package to kind of refine and have a base to start from in order to start modeling your modular meshes or something you know more specific. So I'm gonna select both of these and now we just need to use the modeling mode and in this case, I would merge them and then convert them to a static mesh. So let's go to X form. Uh, I would choose merge. I would choose a new object. So it writes to a new object here. Of course, you can keep one of them, but I'll just do a brand new object. I'm not going to rename it. Output type, I want a static mesh. And what do I want to handle as inputs? Um, in this case, if I wanted to keep the dynamic meshes to kind of come back to and refine, if I need to, I would uh, not delete them. I would actually keep the inputs. So I'm gonna keep the dynamic meshes, but I'm also going to merge and create a new copy, which is going to be a static mesh that I can export. So it gives me the best of both worlds. Keep the dynamic mesh inside the level that I may need to come back and refine, and also create a copy that I can export and begin to model further inside my modeling package. So with all the properties set here, I'm gonna click accept, and I'll have a copy right here. And let me drag this out. Here's where we have a static mesh, and uh, here we also have dynamic meshes. Uh, now, since you have a static mesh inside the level, you can go ahead and maybe go to File, Export Selected, or just delete this from here and use use the copy made inside the content browser by right-clicking and choosing Asset Action and Export. And in this case, I'm going to rename this Dynamic Static Blackout. Name doesn't really matter, name it whatever you want, click Save. I'm gonna keep the same properties and hit Export. And inside mine, let's go ahead and uh, bring them in, import them and see what they look like. See if everything was exported correctly. You, you would go to file, import, navigate into the folder where you exported those FBX files. So let's just do this combined. This is our first static mesh export that we did. And here's the sphere and the cube that has been exported. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And I'm gonna bring in the other one, the dynamic mesh that was converted to a static mesh for export. Let's go to file import and I'm going to choose dynamic static uh, blackout and hit import. And here we have that blackout. So that is how you work with modeling mode and using different type of meshes inside UE5, either a dynamic mesh or a static mesh and kind of cycling between the two depending on what you are working with and what you need as final output. Now, if you need more of a breakdown uh, into the modeling mode, then take a look at an extensive course, UE5 Fundamentals, Volume 1. There are three modules, and the entire second module is entirely focused on showing you how to use the modeling mode to model your static meshes inside UE5. We cover all the options that you need to know for modeling, as well as UV and applying textures so you can create static meshes right inside UE5. The course is available right now for you to pick up and watch all three modules and primarily watch the second module for all the modeling mode options.